Hello everybody, my name is Michael and I'm a product manager here at Meta on the Llama API team. I'm constantly blown away by the incredible ways that the Llama open source models are being used by the developer community and by our partners. But for me, the really mind-blowing examples and the reason that I'm working on what I'm working on uh, are when people take these base models, these general intelligence models and train them to be extremely good at a specific domain uh, using some unique insight or data that they have. Today I'm going to talk to you about two new products that we're launching. A fine tuning tool which allows you to customize a version of Llama to perform better in a specific domain or for your specific use case and then an evaluations tool which you use to determine whether or not you've achieved your goal. I want to start by giving a quick overview of why people fine-tune Llama now with some examples of what we've seen in the community. And I want to talk about this across three dimensions, all of which speak to why so many of you are already training small use case specific models to replace your use of larger, slower, more expensive and often proprietary foundation models. So let's start with the big one, cost. Llama 8B is incredibly cost effective and much cheaper to run than proprietary models. In fact, Articulate's fine-tuned and aligned 8B model not only managed to outperform GPT-40 on the task of Verilog generation, a hardware description language, but it did it at 1 30th of the inference cost, which is just <laughs> incredible. The second dimension is speed. You can get both lower latency and higher throughput with a Llama 8B model, which means if you're processing huge amounts of data or you're working in a real-time environment, a fine-tuned Llama model can be a complete game changer. AT&T said that every day they use Llama to analyze and summarize transcripts of every single customer support call, the equivalent of about 5,000 books worth of information. And by using a fine-tuned Llama 8B model, they can extract all of these insights 10 times faster and 90% cheaper than they were doing it before with their proprietary commercial model solution. And then the final dimension is accuracy. And obviously, you need accuracy across all of the scenarios, both of the scenarios I just talked about. But I want to talk about where fine-tuning is a necessity. And that's when you have some data that only you have and you want to train the model to be good at something. This data isn't part of the base model at all. And so fine tuning it allows you to make the model good at something new, which is exactly what Spotify did when they fine tuned their version of Llama 8B on their listening preference data and got a 14% improvement in Spotify specific tasks versus the base model performance. Now, one thing I do want to call out, and I realize I'm doing a talk here on fine tuning, uh, but one thing I do want to call out is that fine tuning is not always the answer, especially when you're prototyping or you're finding product market fit. Using one of our foundation models hosted in the Llama API or hosted elsewhere is almost certainly the right way to start. So don't just jump straight to fine tuning. Make sure that the thing works before you, before you start optimizing. So let's quickly talk about evaluations. Evaluations are a critical part of any LLM-based product. When you're working with an LLM, the, the, an LLM is non-deterministic, right? They, the evaluations give us a repeatable way of measuring how our models are performing. And fundamentally, this is about ensuring product quality, right? You need to know how well your product is going to work. And they allow us to move from gut feelings to hard data. I'm sure many of you have tried vibe checking how good a model is in the playground only to subsequently find that it didn't really work very well in production. And because they allow you to move from these gut feelings uh, and you get real data, they allow you to de-risk rapid iteration. And as I'm sure all of you are in this space, everyone is moving very rapidly and iteration is critical. So it's really important. And of course, there's no caveat here. Doing evaluations is always the right answer. Always do your evals. I want to run you through a really quick example of how this looks in practice in the Llama API. And I want to frame it around this thing that we hear a lot from people working with LLMs, which is that your app is becoming very expensive to run. 
it's great, you have lots of users, you're processing lots of data, but it's becoming increasingly expensive to use the foundation model and the prompting strategy that you're currently using to run your application. You can take the data that you probably already have, these successful chat completions, pairs of input and output with your existing solution, and you can upload this JSON-L chat completion formatted file directly to the Llama API. And we give you this handy option where you can reserve some of the data you upload to use in evaluations later. Uh, so you don't have to worry about evaluations separately. And the reason I love this tiny checkbox that we have in this flow is because it forces you to think about your training data and your evaluation data as equals. Uh, and it stops you from spending all of your time working on great evals, but not spending a lot of time working on making sure your training data is great. Uh, and I, I think that that's a really good way of framing how training data should be thought of. You can get a really great 8 billion parameter Llama fine-tuned model with a couple of hundred samples, but they have to be good samples. And so randomly extracting some of them to use for your evaluations causes you to think about how good they all are. So let's reserve 20% of data here for our evaluation and move on to the next step. Here you can set the model name. We give you some reasonable defaults for the hyperparameters. You can change them if you want to. You can go and read the docs, figure out what that all means. But I'm just gonna leave them how they are. And then hit run. And here you can see the training job is going. You can do things like follow the log or look at the loss curve if you'd like. It doesn't take very long, you know, for the size of model that we're training here, the 8 billion parameter Llama model, it takes around 15 minutes for a sort of standard size training set. And when it's done, you can download the model directly to your computer and host it wherever you like, or you can click the playground button and you can go and try it out immediately in the playground. Or, and what you should do, and what I'm gonna do here, is click the evaluate button and go and hop over to the evaluations tool and see how it's performing. So if I click that button, we're taken straight over to a new evaluation job. And you can see that our model is already selected. The data we reserved earlier, that 20%, is already populated as a separate data file so that we can use that to test our model. And the only thing we have to do is set up our graders. And our graders are how we compare the ground truth data that we have in that evaluation set with what our new fine-tuned model outputs. And we have semantic similarity, which checks how close they are in embedding space. We have string check, uh, where you can literally compare the strings. So if you're building a classifier, that's really, really helpful. Or we have factuality, which is LLM as a judge that determines how similar the two answers are factually. And that's what the one I'm gonna to select to compare to our ground truth set. And then when I select it, I can select what I want to count as a pass on factuality. So you can play around with this when you're playing with the tool, but here I'm gonna select 70%. And you can see how your model performed against the evaluation data. That's it, doesn't take very long to run evals with batch inference. When they're done, you can dig into the data. You can see where the model performed well and where there's still room for improvement. And you can also download this data and analyze it offline. Go and put it in the spreadsheet app or whatever you'd like to do. And that's it. If you'd like to try out fine tuning and evaluations with Llama API, check out llama.com for more details.